Hi, I'm Dan Herbert from Point Blank Music School, and in this second molecular tutorial, we're going to explore some of the power behind the modulation section of molecular. So we have angel delay running here. I'm going to come up to the modulation section, click on LFO, number one, and then click on the assign button. Next to any parameter which you can modulate, you get this mod amount control. I'm just going to increase it. Now you can see in here, this parameter is being modulated. To reset the mod amount, just double click and then click on assign and we're back to normal. So let's turn that one off and move over to filter bank, press play. And we're going to take a look at the step sequencer. So I'm going to choose step one, click on assign, turn up the modulation amount here. So you can see that the parameter is being modulated by the shape of the pattern over here. So if I change the pattern, you can hear how it affects the sound. There we go, so that's a step sequencer. We can use it at a fast rate or we could program a pattern which lasts over the duration of a whole track. Let's turn this off and then look at the envelope section. So I've got uh, the vocoder open here. I'm gonna click on a sign. And just turn up the mod amount. So you can see in here, it's affecting the pitch of the vocoder. We can sequence in where the envelope gets triggered. And then we can adjust the envelope settings here. The attack determines how quickly the envelope opens and the release controls how long it takes to decay. And then we've also got a gate control which affects the duration. The envelope section also features an envelope follower, and this will track the level of the incoming audio. So let's press play, turn up mod amount. We can adjust the level of the incoming audio, basically like sensitivity control, and also the release time. And these affect how it responds to the dynamics of the incoming audio. You can obviously adjust the modulation amount or reduce it down for something a bit more subtle. You can also set the input to either come from the dry input or from any of the DSPs or the output as well. The final section here is a powerful logic section and this can combine the different modulators to create new and potentially complex modulation sources. So let's hit play and turn up the modulation amount. So with Logic 1, it's scaling the LFO 1 with LFO 2. Let's turn it up a bit. And there's a whole range of different ways which we can combine these specific modulators. Good, so let's focus just on the filter. I'm gonna take off the modulation. Quite a handy way to work is if you double click on a parameter name when the assign button is on, it will show you an overview of all the various different routings from the modulation section. You can actually use this to assign, or if we want to, we can just reset all the modulators in one go and then close and get back to normal. Another handy little feature is this clear mod button up here and if you click this, this will reset all modulation routings to all parameters. For now though, let's take a closer look at the LFO section. So we're going to LFO and LFO1. A sign is already on so I can just come straight down to filter and turn up the mod amount. I'm also going to solo it. Now we've got two different modes for operating the LFOs, we've got bipolar and unipolar and that's determined by these two little triangles here. At the moment it's in bipolar mode and if you have a look you can see that the parameter is being modulated by equal amounts below and above the centre value. If we switch this to unipolar mode then the modulation starts at the parameter value. We can also invert the modulation amount by pulling the control downwards. And that basically inverts the shape of the modulation source. We've got a whole variety of different shapes to select from the LFO section, so we can grab hold of this shape control. At the moment it's on Sawtooth. As I pull the shape to the middle, it goes to a triangle wave, to a saw down. If we select the sine wave here, this will vary from a square wave through to a sine wave, 
through to a spike wave. This waveform is a pulse wave. So we get a kind of square wave. You can hear a kind of quantized effect on the cutoff and it inverts it. And then the final waveform here is noise. So with the shape value all the way to the left, we get a kind of random step sequence. And as we increase this, what it does is it slides between random values. So you can see if you look at the parameter, it's gliding around. As is standard with most LFOs, we've got control over the frequency or rate. So at the moment this is synced and going over half a bar. If I switch this to a quarter, then you can see the cutoff now being modulated every beat. Put it out to a bar or the longest you can actually modulate it is over 32 bars. And this is always synced to your timeline or the fastest is a 96th. Alternatively, you can switch to free and dial in any frequency value. LFOs 2 through to 4 also allow you to sync to LFO 1. We can also control the overall mod amount of each modulator by adjusting this slider here, as well as invert it. And up in the top right hand corner here, we have a global modulation amount control, and this will affect all the modulators. So if I set that to zero, then no modulation occurs. We can also invert and double click to take it back to normal. Now, as we've got a whole range of different modulation sources, it's possible to route these to either multiple parameters or the same parameter. So let's set this up to a square wave and I'm going to assign it to the cutoff as well. So LFO1 is set to sawtooth and ramping it up over a bar. And then also we're getting this kind of quantized effect. And then let's just reduce the mod amount down. The other great thing about molecular is the ability to actually modulate the modulation sources. So as an example of this, let's say I wanted to increase the rate of LFO1. I could use LFO3 to control that. So I'm going to set this up to be a saw up, sync to tempo, and then let's set this over two bars. And then to assign this to the rate of LFO1, I'm going to make sure a sign is on, okay? And then click on this little padlock icon. That says LFO3. Then click on LFO1. Here is the rate control, and I can now turn up the modulation amount. And we can see, at the moment it's in uh, bipolar mode, so let's jump back to three. Switch it to unipolar. And we can hear and see how LFO3 is now modulating the rate of LFO1. So let's move on to the step sequencer. For this, I'm going to use filter bank, which basically contains five bandpass filters with individual level controls. If I press play, and we can determine how these filters are spread out with this spread control. And this is in semitones. Set that to 12, and with resonance, we get more conventional sound, or if you push the resonance up, it gets quite cool tube-like textures. So we can hear the step sequencer here is modulating the cutoff. So at the moment it's generating a pattern over eight eighth notes, so a bar. If we want it to speed up, then we can choose sixteenths over half a bar. If we wanted it to last for a bar, then we could say 16 sixteenths. And we can also get different cross patterns as well. If I take solo off, let's turn this up a bit. So if I choose 15 here, it's constantly cutting across the beat. Another way to get the pattern to change is click on shift, change the emphasis of it. And you can see it shifting one step each time. The other parameters up here are playback direction, so we can get the pattern to play in reverse. Or this mode, it's basically ping pong, so it goes forward and then backwards. Or random, where it just randomly jumps through the pattern. You can also switch it to bipolar mode simply by right clicking or control clicking with a Mac. Click on the buttons there. You can see now the display has changed. 
can see how it's affecting the parameter. And you might have noticed we can also copy and then just paste between the different step sequences. And there's also a random mode there as well. A bit of potluck if that's what you're into. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series where we take a more detailed look at the unique morphing capabilities, pitch quantization, and explore some of the unique effects. We cover a wide range of software from native instruments on our courses. Check out Point Blank's website for more details.